Wow, good morning all. Um, it's not often that I feel small, uh, but I certainly do on this stage. Uh, as a six foot lady, like I said, it's not, it's not often, but certainly on this stage. Um, so as Eve quite rightly said, my name is Sarah Bryant, and I have the great privilege of supporting the many small businesses that sell on the UK, um, eBay UK platform. Um, now, over the course of the day, you're going to have the opportunity to step into a number of groups on all things eBay. And this has been teed up really nicely by Fergus, by Murray, and by Eve. This includes the category-specific sessions, tips and tricks and support sessions on the various different programs that eBay has launched to support as many of our sellers as possible. And I suppose I'm kicking off these sessions to kind of bring them together in one overall holistic view on how to build a plan to optimize your success on the platform to drive the right performance for your overall business. And then, after this session, I'm thrilled to say that I will be joined by four sellers to talk us through how they've impacted and they've implemented some of these pillars of success in order to drive performance in the, their overall business. Um, so, I'm actually going to build today on the analogy of a house. Um, now, you don't need to be experts in how to build a house and the whole building piece, but just to understand how the structure of houses can come together and how the various different pillars and the inclusive part of all of a house can hold together the plan and hopefully ensure that this is a well-structured business ready to thrive from success. Now, most of you will already have a business plan, and some of you may not. And this session is not about teaching you how to build a business plan, although there are some pieces within here that will hopefully be useful for that if you don't have one. But more a consideration for how to drive your business on eBay and how to expand your reach even further. This session isn't just about strategy planning, but it's about ex execution. The, strategy, the strategic piece, the planning strategically, and the execution all rolled into one. And as I said, I've built the session on the analogy of a house, so hopefully you can understand at the end how it comes together. Firstly, the land. Without sounding too much like Kirsty Allsop, location, location, location. And it's really important that you expand your reach where you can. And expanding into different channels and different lands can really offer you further growth. Our panel this afternoon will touch a little bit on how they've expanded into different lands to ensure that they've realized that growth and supported their overall brand value and brand awareness. This isn't about moving all of your business onto one channel, um, uh, but it's about appreciating that each channel can offer something different to help you grow your brand awareness further. Now, most of you will have already decided on your inventory strategy. However, a great way to grow your business is to diversify your overall inventory strategy with complementary inventory. I'd like to explain this one to you with an example. So one of the sellers that we've been working with as part of the Pro Trader program, which is one of our supporting programs that Murray mentioned within his keynote, she was a seller of bath bombs. So she was growing her business kind of in line with overall market, but wanted to understand how she could, she could expand her inventory to expand her growth and help build a much stronger business. She launched some complementary lines. So she did some room diffusers, she did some candles, stepped into completely different areas and had to actually diversify her operational structure to enable her to do that. She saw huge success from this but again, was growing her business now with additional markets included as part of the overall market growth. She then saw a further opportunity. She thought, how about if I added all of these different pieces of inventory into hampers? I could break into that gifting market even more. And also, I could trade my customer up in overall to help them realize a higher best basket price. The final thing that she did was she added a more premium product and attached a much more premium brand to it. And again, this traded people up, and she was therefore able to once again realize a much higher average basket price. This is where these differing things pull together. 
Now, from here, you can expand your growth, drive strategy. Some of these will be complementary and some of them not. But key here is to ensuring a steady supply, building trusted suppliers where you can to ensure that there are no inventory gaps. If a buyer views an item from your store that is out of stock, that is a potential missed opportunity. Forecasting and planning here is key. A, so that you don't have much too, much too much capital and money locked within your existing inventory in your warehouse, but to also make sure that you have enough inventory to meet that demand. Now, here's the first place where I key and tick key all of this into the sessions that we've got going on through the rest of the day. Seller Hub is a great place to help you forecast and plan for the future. Um, and later on in the uh, Ashstead room, my colleagues Emma and Brian are doing a demo on Seller Hub, how to get the most out of Seller Hub, how to use TerraPeak. And it's a really must see session for those of you who want to understand how to forecast better across all of your business. This then obviously feeds nicely into your commercial plan. So we've touched on the importance of forecasting and planning stock, but this should also be considered for sales, gross and net margin, with an important aspect here being fees, inclusive of eBay fees, website fees, that operating cost line with on your P&L. You must truly understand it in depth. A final big consideration here is your pricing strategy. Obviously, pricing is at the discretion of our sellers and of, your, of yourselves. But if you want to look to diversify your inventory strategy, that is where having a much better pricing strategy can help support. This can then feed nicely into a promotional calendar. Now, promotional information and promotional events are super important to drive repeat purchase. So firstly, if you are able to attract a buyer via a promotion, they are 10 times more likely to return to your store for a repeat purchase. Don't look at promotions as a uh, value driver necessarily. Don't look at them as a race to the bottom, but look at them as an opportunity to capture customers at the right time to drive that repeat purchase. And then finally, from a commercial plan perspective, think globally. A great way to grow is to increase your reach. eBay is obviously a global marketplace. And therefore, the options for cross-border trade or the utilization of our global shipping program can help you reach a much larger audience. And my colleague Lorna will be touching on cross-border trade later. Um, and then we also have a session about selling across borders in the Edgebaston room. So we've diversified our strategy to extend our product range. We're clued in on the commercials to drive the right growth with the right products at the right time. Now we need to ensure the foundations of our house are solid. And as we build this house and business to make sure that it is sturdy enough to support all of that growth that will come. This is key. Listing optimization. Some people call me Sarah, listing optimization, Bryant, because I go on about it all the time. It is so, so important. This is about ensuring, firstly, that your buyers can find your product and they land on your detail page. And that's about image count, as Murray quite, quite rightly called out. That's about your item titles and ensuring they're descriptive enough. Then, once you've landed the buyer on your detail page, then you need to empower that purchasing decision. And this is all about ensuring that you've got great item descriptions. It's about ensuring that you're being super informative. Again, it's very important that you've got the great images on there so that nothing is a surprise to them if they were to receive and purchase that item and receive it. This is key. An example here I always use, we were at our uh, Salford Roadshow, speaking to a seller who was selling jewelry. And he was selling a 6,000 pound diamond ring, beautiful. He had two images. So I was like, you know, you could probably invest a little bit more in those images, make sure that you know, you're focusing in on the stones of the ring, etc. He then showed me the item description. And he had three words in his item, descri item description. Gold diamond ring. Firstly, pretty self-explanatory. 
probably didn't need to be in the description. But in order to sell a £6,000 ring, you need to be much more descriptive. You need to invest in those detailed pages. Because at the end of the day, that is exactly the most important part when it comes to empowering that purchase decision. And then the final thing with regards to listing optimization is making sure that the buyer can get the item when they want it. And if they get it and they don't like it, they can return it in a timely fashion and in an easy way. So on listing optimization, my colleague Alex Hyatt is joining the big stage here later on to talk about you, to talk to you about a specific title is how to improve your listings visibility in search, another key session. Um, and then to understand more about making sure that you're meeting the buyer experience that is best in order to drive that purchase. My colleague Ananya is touching on retail standards. And then uh, another colleague, Jeffrey, is going to talk about some programs that we have put in place in order to support that further. Now, we've got the land, the strategy, the foundations of the house, the important parts. We're now moving on to the pillars that will hold up the structure of your overall business. It is imperative that you always understand who your customer is, what need you are meeting with your inventory, how you can improve their overall experience, and where they hang out. Lots of businesses look at this differently. So, if you are able, please all stand. Let's just take two minutes. Introduce yourselves to the businesses to your left, the businesses to your right, the business is behind, the business is in front. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sure you could go on all day. Let's take a seat back down. So hopefully in those couple of minutes, you've met some like-minded businesses to learn and to share. eBay Open, these sessions, just like our roadshow, offer the great option for you to build your tribe. These will help with future support and help. And hopefully you guys can connect on a regular basis to bounce ideas, bounce strategic initiatives, bounce ideas based on the pillars that I've talked about today off one another to help grow together as fellow like-minded businesses. There are also many great online communities. Um, Michael, who's in the room, runs one of our online communities. Superb, the sharing that happens on there between sellers. At the end of the day, they might have spotted something that you have missed and vice versa. So, finally, when I talk about where do your customers hang out, this isn't me suggesting which pub do they go to or which wine bar, but what social media channel do they use? Where do they do their product research? As this will help with driving buyers, which is something that I will come on to in a moment. So that's really energised me, that session. I won't get you to stand up again, but I loved it. Um, so next, telling your story. So shopping can be an emotive action for many. In actual fact, it's more emotive than not. Um, and this is where it's super key to tell your story. Build your brand and invest in your shop window. This then needs to run through all of your communication, from buyers seeing your storefront on eBay, and my colleague Sam is talking about eBay shops and all of the great functionality that's changed within that, uh, and how to merchandise your shop as well to the communications that you send to your buyers post-sale. All of it builds your brand. Never under underestimate the experience a buyer will have when they receive an item from you. Um, a great example here is some of our small business gifting businesses. They get great, great feedback. They see a much higher repeat purchase rate um, when they invest in the buyer experience at the time of receipt. So some of these things are including a 10% off coded coupon for their next purchase. Some of it is just nicely wrapping the, uh, the item with a handwritten, uh, handwritten note. All of this, again, comes back to telling your story and building your brand. 
I'll tell you another story here of a great brand that's built on eBay. So um, we had this couple who had twins, wonderful story. And one of the things that they experienced when they had their two boy, little boy and a little girl was that they couldn't find a baby blanket that worked for them. That they were fussy about, you know, just ensuring that there were allergy protectants, etc., etc. So they decided that they didn't want to go back to work after having their twins. Instead, they wanted to build their own small business. And they wanted to build a brand around baby blankets. They invested hugely and heavily into the overall brand. And this was through everything. The label, the shopping experience, their storefront on eBay, all the way through to exactly what I said about that experience of the buyer at time of receipt. The blanket comes in a nice tissue wrap with a lovely ribbon and a handwritten note. And actually, the impact that that experience has had on repeat purchase, further gifts for more friends having babies, but also on word of mouth, super powerful. So like I said, never underestimate the power. So next, driving buyers. So there are many tools on and off eBay that drive buyers. Um, uh, and that is an important part of it. But what is obviously here, key here is to keep that drumbeat of communication so that they return to you and your store at a time when they want to make that purchase. Adding new products is a great opportunity to reach out to your followers and buyer base. A promotion using the tools available to you. And again, Brian and Emma will touch on that within their live demo later. And social media. Social media experts say that three to five posts a week will grow your follower base, drive visibility, and ultimately drive purchase. What's important here is knowing your customer and knowing where they hang out. Back to my previous point on one of the other pillars. The reality is, is that customers look in different places for different things. And using your network, using all of the people that you met a couple of minutes ago and will meet as the day goes on, is it will help you understand where your buyers hang out. Another option here is, of course, asking for feedback. The ultimate question, how did you hear about us, is really helpful to make sure that you're building your presence in the right place in order to drive buyers. So hopefully by this stage in the plan, you're with me on how to optimize your foundations. You're telling your story, building your brand, and retaining existing ones. The next stage is to enable that growth. And back to my, one of our earlier pillars about understanding your P&L on your commercial plan is, will help to understand where you can reinvest to enable growth. Whether it be deeper stock holdings in certain lines to show you don't run out of stock, more social media campaigns, better equipment to speed up your operations, or even hiring more people to cope with that extra demand. This is also an area where you might want to explore capital support. And my colleague Lawrence later will discuss, discuss the options that eBay, eBay have put in place to enable easy access to capital that's then attached to your overall eBay sales, allowing for that flexibility of payback and in order to fuel the growth that you need to um, enable. So the next is fueling the growth. Obviously, very, very tightly linked to enabling the growth. As I said, these are very tightly linked pillars in our plan. So what's really important here when you fuel that growth is making sure that you understand your return on investment that you are seeing from the efforts that you're using to drive buyers in order to ensure that you're fueling efforts and investments into the right place. A data-driven approach is really key here. And therefore, understanding things like repeat buyer rates, coded coupon usage, impression improvements based on promos. This will all help you fuel your overall growth. And if you want to understand that in more depth so that you can get into the weeds of how you can really use data-driven decisions, then the marketplace advisors that you know, Fergus and Murray have talked about and pointed out that are on the second floor, they are excellent at all of this and will be able to point you in the right direction in order, to, in order to ensure that you're fueling that growth. So finally, the 10th pillar and the roof of our overall structure. 
You, as businesses, need to constantly evaluate what is working and what isn't. Is your buyer base changing? As you are diversifying your inventory, are you driving a completely different customer need? Some of our panelists will touch about how this has been really vital for them. But the crux of it is that things will always change. It could be the macro environment, like Murray pointed out. It could be cost price increases, supply chain challenges, new trends, and even a completely different buyer need. Something that we've walked into within the last 12 months alone. But if you remain agile and constantly review these 10 pillars, then you are more likely to grow as a business. And here we have it. The 10 pillars pulled together into one structure with a door and a window, which is lovely. Um, and why it is important to consider each and every one. So, Without further ado, and as promised, I would now like to invite four sellers onto the stage to talk to you about their businesses and how they've adopted some of these strategies to grow their overall businesses. Mm -hmm.